If you want to listen to digital radio stations in your car, but would prefer to use the original radio and steering wheel controls, you may be able to install an integrated DAB interface. These devices are normally installed out of sight, use FM or a USB socket for audio, and are controlled with the car's original buttons or a remote. The good thing about these devices is that they're hidden away and preserve the original appearance of the dashboard. You could continue to use the car's original radio and its features, such as Bluetooth and the information shown about the car. However, they are more expensive than add-on adapters and are often limited to DAB reception and possibly aux in. They can be time consuming to install and in some cars you may benefit more from a new DAB head unit with Bluetooth, USB and so on. In this video I'm going to install an in-car DAB interface and look at how it works in this 2004 Mercedes C-Class. This is the factory radio and CD player that's in the car. It can be controlled with these buttons on the steering wheel. The device we're going to use today is an auto DAB device. The way this works is it goes between the car's wiring and the radio so that we can control it with the steering wheel controls and the output, the audio from this device, will come through on an FM frequency which we can save as a preset. So there's no slots for removal keys on this radio which means we're going to have to take out some trim and then we'll find a place to install the auto DAB device. Something else that we need to do is install a DAB aerial because the FM AM aerial in this car uh, isn't suitable for being used with DAB. So we're going to just use a windscreen antenna. Uh, we've installed those before on the channel. Uh, we'll put a link up above to the video where you can see how that's installed. So I'm going to skip ahead and do that and just bring the cable from the DAB aerial into the glove box ready to use. This car doesn't have a USB socket, but if your built-in radio does, you could look at a universal DAB interface. These only require a DAB aerial and a USB lead, and are easier to install. Browsing and selecting stations would be similar to choosing MP3s on a USB stick. If your car doesn't have steering wheel controls, there are also interfaces with a remote control. The information is still shown on the car's display and audio is transmitted over FM. To find out which is the best option for your car, you could speak to an installer or look at the websites for AutoDAB and Dention. The only tools required in this car have been flat bladed and Torx screwdrivers, but you may need others for your car, such as trim removal tools. With the vents and the controls removed, we now have access to the four screws which hold the radio into the dashboard. So we need to remove the radio so that we can unplug the main radio plug and the aerial and connect them up to the auto DAB unit. It's at this point we also need to decide where to install the auto DAB unit and where you find a good place will obviously depend on your particular car. What I think I'm going to do is put it in the glove box. Now there's a little shelf in the glove box and a little hole which is ready for a CD changer if one was installed in this car. So I think that's going to be a good place. You can buy these sorts of devices for between £100 and £200 but you may have to add an aerial and pay for installation. An add-on DAB adapter is cheaper and easier to install. If you think you might want Bluetooth, a USB input, or in-car navigation, a replacement stereo might offer better value for money. Here in the glove box, we now have our cables coming through from behind the radio. So we have the aerial connections, we have the main plug from the wiring harness, and we have the DAB aerial plug as well. So the windscreen aerial is installed, the cable comes down the A-pillar behind the glove box and out of the same hole there. So we'll just plug these in and we'll start with the aerial connection. This plug here goes on the side of the device and that should just push in until it clicks securely. And then we can take our DAB aerial connection and just twist that on the side. There are some lugs on this device so if you want to secure it somewhere you can do that. I'm just going to pop it on the shelf for the time being just to make sure everything's okay. Now we have the device installed, we're tuned into Absolute Radio 90s at the moment. We can navigate through the stations using button A and button B, the up and down buttons. By default, these buttons on this particular device go through presets, 
which is quite a good idea. Here the device has found 80 stations and to be navigating through those would take quite a long time. So at home you can use these instructions to set up your favourite stations and then you'll navigate through those by default. If there is a station that you want to go through you can go through the list alphabetically. We'll hold down the A button and we'll go up to, to Absolute Classic Rock. And you can see we're tuned into that now. So the A and B buttons are used to navigate through all the settings as well. Uh, with this particular device there are uh, instructions on how to navigate through all of the settings here and you can just use those buttons uh, as you would normally. Thank you for watching this video. See our cars playlist for videos about adding DAB digital radio to vehicles and subscribe to see videos like this when they're uploaded.